half in the bag. I like to eat cheeseburgers. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Boy, those events at the lawyer's office sure didn't go like I had hoped. No. No, they didn't, Jay. Hello, and welcome to Half in the Bag. I'm Mike. And I'm Jay. And we just saw the Avengers 1.5, Captain America 2, The Winter Soldier, Part 1. Most of the intelligence community doesn't believe he exists. The ones that do call him the Winter Soldier. He's a ghost. You'll never find him. Captain America the Winter Soldier is another Marvel movie. And it's a sequel to the first Captain America movie. Oh shit, this fucking room is spinning. This one is about Captain America and a huge plot involving a shield or the hydrants or massive explosions and violence. Can Aaron Rodgers beat up the man with the iron arm? Can he uncover the mystery of the plot? Does it matter? I don't know. It's a fuck away from me. Mike, what did you think of Captain America, the Winter Soldier? I liked Captain America, the Winter Soldier. It was good. It was exciting, um, it had a plot I could follow. Uh, I was invested, sort of. Um, <laughs> and then, you know what, we're, we're gonna talk about this movie, but it's hard to talk about it without getting into a lot of spoilers. Yes. So really, I think we're gonna just come out and say, whole review, spoilers, be careful. Just, cause I don't wanna keep track of what I'm saying. So, uh, good <laughs> would movie. You, would you recommend the movie? I'd recommend the movie, yeah. Um, I would also recommend the movie. Spoilers! I, I wouldn't, uh, it's weird that we're doing our recommendations off the bat, right right up front, but uh, I wouldn't recommend it to, to little kids. No, we learned uh, from first-hand experience that little kids will be bored by this movie. Yeah, they'll be bored, and there's a lot of murder and violence in it. I know, it was great. <laughs> and, and that's what I liked about it. Yeah. Um, it had sort of a, like a born identity, uh, Mission Impossible kind of vibe mm -hmm. to the, the, the storyline and how things are executed. But yeah, there's, uh, everyone gets shot. Every, everyone but Aaron Rodgers just shoots everybody. Yeah, it's yeah. so wonderful. Hey, Rich! Rich! Rich, does Captain America kill people? Um. Or does he have a, like a pussy code of ethics <laughs> like Superman or Batman? We need answers. <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay. Well, get out. <laughs> get out then if you can't help us. Wow. <laughs> the fuck out. If you can't help us, get the fuck out. But the point I'm trying to make is under 12, maybe? Yeah, there's no, there's no uh, uh, flying alien monsters. There's no wacky supporting characters. Or there's a little bit of comedy, but it mostly comes from the dialogue, just banter. A little bit um, here and there. It's not as lighthearted as the Avengers was. It's, yeah. it's Jason Bourne with the shield. Mm -hmm. um, and some more sci-fi gadgets. And some sci-fi gadgets, more, more techno gadgets, which is why I got the um, Mission Impossible vibe with all the, yeah, you gotta hack into this computer and blah, blah, blah. I also unfortunately got a, a Star Wars The Phantom Menace vibe from this. Um, oh no. The, the Jedi Council meeting with uh, oh, all the other I, characters yeah. and then this, um, uh, spoilers of course, this elaborate uh, plot of, <laughs> of takeover by Hydra. This one that, made sense though. That happened right under Samuel L. Jackson's nose, sort of. <laughs> um, I could follow what was happening in this one though, yeah. which was nice. And, and, and the premise was, Giant ships in the sky will shoot people <laughs> with pinpoint accuracy all over the world. Yeah. And it's like, if that doesn't give a small child nightmares, I don't know what will. <laughs> Add a metal arm. Are you ready? All it takes is one step. People are gonna die. I can't let that happen. Captain America needs my help. Well, I was surprised when the Winter Soldier, whatever his name is, um, in comic book lore. His name is Bucky, which kept making me think of uh, uh, the Avenging Disco Godfather in this movie. Every time 
he's, he, they're talking about him being evil now. I was just thinking, Bucky, what have they done to you? Bucky, what has you done to your thing? Uh, what has he had? What has he had? What has he had? Yeah, when Bucky takes his mask off, and it's like, and then uh, several fat guys with beards in the audience go, <gasps> and yeah. everyone else goes, what? I didn't know who that was. I saw the first Captain America movie in the theater, and it's left my brain. Yeah. What does he have? Captain America the Winter, uh, fights the Winter Soldier, who is Bucky, in an amazing coincidence. Mm. His friend Bucky fell off a train in, and landed in the ground, and thankfully he survived because he had previously been part of the Hydra uh, prison camp, where the little guy with glasses, the evil scientist, turned him into an evil soldier just like Captain America. But Bucky didn't know it yet. That's how he was able to survive the fall of a train. Uh, and then, and then the, the, the intelligence of the little scientist man is, is trans, transfused into 1970s computers. I, you know what, that I liked so that. That was so awesome. It was, it was so goofy. I liked it, though. It, it was in a movie that, that was... And I, we say this movie took itself seriously, but it wasn't brooding Dark Knight serious. Um, it was just sort of a straight action movie, and that was like a goofier element. And yeah. I like that there were little things like that sprinkled throughout, where they didn't, you didn't roll your eyes or it didn't take you out of the movie. It was just fun little goofy sci-fi comic book stuff. Yeah, it was the perfect blend between the brooding dark nightness and then too wacky or campy, um, which the Spider-Man movie did not achieve. That I think this one does. You know, there's a basic little character arc for Captain America. You know, he's a uh, he's a guy who likes good and evil, black and white, and then he's transported in the future where there's all these conspiracies and he doesn't know who to trust, and he's, yeah. I'm the Captain America and I want to save the day, but he doesn't know what's going on. I, I think I've grown to like the Captain America character. I think I used to probably think he was boring. I never really thought about him much at all, but I, I like, yeah. he's very simple, and that's sort of refreshing with all these movie, all these comic book movies now. Yeah, amidst this plot of uh, spy intrigue and double crosses, Captain America kind of just shines out as just this beacon of truth, justice, and the American way. Unlike Superman. <laughs> Which is good, because we don't have a fucking Superman who's anymore. A, a violence monger. <laughs> and I was wondering uh, the whole time, is that Robert Redford, or is that a really old man? Yes. Is that him? Because he looks like a grandpa. <laughs> he is a grandpa now. Robert Redford is 127 years old. I thought he died because I always saw his face on my salad dressing. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, he's dead now. Is that what happens to actors when they die? They put them on salad dressing labels? Well, yeah. yeah. Or am I thinking of Paul Newman? Paul Newman's deader than Robert Redford. Mm. Robert Redford is alive by Hollywood magic. <laughs> Stan, Stan, Stan Winston filled him with animatronics. Isn't Stan Winston dead? Stan Winston is dead. <laughs> uh, and he is also on my salad dressing bottle. Who else is in this movie? What happened to Jeremy Renner? What happened to all the other Avengers? Yeah, that's one of the things these movies always have to kind of deal with is why don't they just call up the other Avengers? Yeah. yeah. And which I'm okay with. Like, but, I, you know, you just kind of have to go with it because they're standalone movies. You have to, have to accept that they can't all just show up, even right. though logically they should. Yeah. This is a pretty big deal, the fact that the entire S.H.I.E.L.D agency is is crumbling and well yeah i would say out of the the standalone movies this one has the biggest consequences for the overall yeah like, it's almost like an avengers 2 without all the avengers characters in yeah. it like major shit happens in this they're movie. setting some stuff up yeah like, which is one of those things you know you gotta like marvel's done a really good job i think of of balancing all this shit and having it make sense and having it connect you know i like some of the movies more than others but they're they're ambitious, which is nice, and they are willing to take some risks. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, this movie, first of all, the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, everything about that's fucking weird, and they're taking a chance on that. And this movie, not only does it not feel like any of those other Avengers movies, it doesn't even feel like a sequel to Captain America. It's like no. you take that Captain America character and put him in a completely different genre. They did a great job with their storyline, you know? I mean, what, the, what you would expect from a movie like this. But really, top of the line in terms of everything else, mm -hmm. like the, the fight scenes in this were really great, really yeah, great well, action. Same with the Iron Man movies. And, and I know X-Men is Marvel, but if you compare something like this to that X-Men first class prequel Where thing, everything was like a cartoon. It and... looked like a TV show. It was real cheap, and I don't yeah. know why. Um, for some reason, these, like the Spider-Man movie looks cheap. The X-Men movies look cheap. I hope the Brian Singer one, um, Days of Future Past, kind of, I'm, I'm assuming it will, ups, ups it. 
a little, but these ones stand out. Well, this one in particular, like lots of practical stunts, lots of practical car crashes and explosions, and then that was, uh, there's a really great car chase sequence that I thought was well done. A little too much shaky cam in parts, but not as bad as, as some other modern action movies. Yeah, the, uh, the assassination attempt on Nick Fury was one of the most exciting sequences in the movie. Yeah. More so exciting than the ending of the, all the giant spaceships exploding yeah. and all that all that action. This is funny. I think about this movie. You know, it's this slick, well-made, well-executed, engaging action movie. And I was just thinking about the, the Albert Pune Captain America movie where you got the rubber ears. Time How far sure have we've changed. Come. There was a little nod to that movie in this, I, or at least I hope it was an intentional nod, where they're driving and, and uh, Scarlett Johansson says to him, when did you learn to steal a car? It's like, that's his big move in the other Captain America movie. He steals cars. Price of freedom is high. And it's a price I'm willing to pay. He told me not to trust anyone. This is how it ends. Everything goes. Looks like you're giving the orders now, Captain. I'm right. Would you say this movie stands as a its own movie where you don't have to follow all the Marvel Universe shit to, to enjoy it? I would say so, yeah. I mean, you have to have some reference with S.H.I.E.L.D. and all that, but there's a nice little scene where uh, Aaron Rodgers goes to the uh, Smithsonian exhibit for Captain America, and he's kind of looking around, and it's like, Captain America was a weak soldier who began the... So it's an exposition, backstory. Um, done in a visual way. Done in a visual nice. way that uh, tied you to the past. Uh, they explain what S.H.I.E.L.D. is, and then the the real exposition comes when the, the guys who's, whose brain is in a computer oh, explains... Oh, that's, that's the classic, you're about to die, so I'm going to explain yeah. the entire plot. I've been stalling this whole time. <laughs> so there are two nice little exposition scenes that um, explain everything so yeah it is a standalone movie but you know having some context helps yeah I, I, I do worry about that becoming because I think it works as its own movie too it's just a straight action movie um, certain things I, I think the stakes feel higher if you are more familiar with shield and Hydra and all that stuff but yeah I do worry about future Marvel movies and it just becoming a big confusing mess of you got to see Captain America 2 to understand you know Thor 5 and like here's, all this nonsense. here's the part where I get cynical this Captain America movie is like the biggest opener in April. Oh, really? It's 100 times the amount that the original Captain America made. It, it's like, it's doing really, really well. Okay. You know, and I think people just want to go and see people fighting and explosions. And really, it's not like you have to be a genius to, to figure all this out. They're just going to keep throwing bad guys that want to do bad things. <laughs> Just like comic books have been going along for 100 years. Yeah. Like, you know, but... I, I wonder if that's partially why they don't bother to put... Like we talked about with the second Thor movie. Oh, it's not Thor 2. You know, it's Thor, subtitle. Yeah. And this movie's, you know, Captain America, subtitle. If it's like they, they think in 20 years when people want to watch these movies, it doesn't matter what order you watch them in. Do they not care? Because this is going to become even more of a mess. Maybe. <laughs> but I mean... Everything is just the subtitle. Yeah, they're setting... Yeah, Avengers 2 up for some sort of space god to come and uh, something with Thor. And yeah, because not only do you have to watch all these movies, you can't watch Captain America, Captain America 2, Captain America 3. They're not numbered, so you don't know. And then you also have to watch these other movies that connect to it. And Here's the thing, though. No matter what movie you're watching, no matter how epic in scale they make it, it's always going to boil down to there's a big fight at the end. Mm. And then something shoots down from the sky, or something big is flying around and blows up. Yeah. And then that's all people want. So you're, you're saying for a general audience, they're not concerned about the details. Nope, nope. The only thing I can foresee, um, and it's already happened to me, is, is mental burnout mm. from overload of special effects and big, massive, exciting things happening. Because to me, it's, it, you know, it's starting to happen. Yeah. Uh, especially with Man of Steel. Yeah, where... and that's another thing I liked about this movie. It was scaled back quite a bit. And you're talking scaled back as in three gigantic <laughs> massive warships exploding. Yeah, that feels scaled and back. And blowing up Washington, <laughs> D.C. That feels scaled back, but um, 
Yeah, and then the Thor one was a little scaled back too, where there's this big thing happening, but it's very uh, confined yeah. in a global sense. The Superman one, no, and, yeah. I, and I really don't look forward to that Superman, Batman team up movie. Yeah. Um, and then, I, I don't know, at some point, you'd think the general population will get kind of tired of the same thing, but. You never know. I, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. So I think they're. they're um, Going, whoever is behind these Marvel movies is going to collect most of the money in the world. <laughs> you talk about the, 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 the growing gap between the classes, the rich and the poor. It'll all, be Marvel and everyone else? All the money is filtering towards Marvel. <laughs> and and the, the Marvel gets richer and the poor get poorer. They raked in $28 billion! Forget about the oil companies. It's Marvel you have to worry about. the good guys from the bad guys. If they're shooting at you, they're bad. So I really like Scarlett Johansson in this movie too. I thought she was much better utilized than in the the other movies. Uh, yeah, that character. A more realistic. I hear you guys are talking about the new Captain America movie. That's right. You two think you're hot shots, huh? Mm -mm. Well, we're gonna see how good your memory is. I've written down some comic book movies on these cue cards, and you're gonna tell me what the plots were. Jay, Iron Man. The first Iron Man. Iron Man one, yes. Um, Tony Stark builds an Iron Man suit. And then Jeff Bridges builds a bigger Iron Man suit, and then they fight. Correct. <laughs> Mike, X-Men Origins, Wolverine. Uh, Wolverine uh, hides in Alaska. Uh, uh, hold on, give me a minute here. <laughs> he, he has, oh, he has to team up with Sabretooth at the end on a nuclear reactor. He gambits in it. Uh, Can we phone a friend? No. Oh. So Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool and he has Cyclops' eyes, Wolverine's claw, uh, uh, arm swords, and then they all fight in the end. Correct. I would have accepted Gambit, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> Jay. Yes. Hulk. Which, Which Hulk? Hulk? The Hulk. Ang Lee Hulk? Yes, that's the Hulk. The other one is the Incredible Hulk. I just said Hulk. Oh my God, what happened in that one? He becomes the Hulk, and then Nick Nolte becomes another Hulk, and then they fight. Correct. <laughs> Mike. Yes. The Fantastic Four, the Dark Surfer rises. I only saw the first one. Incorrect. Jay, Green Lantern. I didn't see Green Lantern. You can pass that over to me. Yeah. Uh, pass, Mike. pass to Mike. Okay. Okay, the Green Lantern. Ryan Reynolds is a... A uh, New York taxi cab driver by day, and um, I, that's completely wrong. I have no idea what his <laughs> profession was. He, oh my God, I know he flies around in space. There's a there's a fish man. I see. I saw this movie. Okay, I really saw this movie. Ryan Reynolds gets the power of the Green Lantern somehow. I don't remember how. Does he have to stop a bad guy at the end? I'm sure he did. Well, that's I the think, plot. I think there's a monster on an alien planet that wants to 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 do something, <laughs> uh, he, he, he... Correct. Jay, X-Men 3. Oh God, uh, mutant rights. <sighs> and, and then everybody fights. Correct. Mike, why aren't you a lucky fucker? Okay. The Wolverine. Uh, can you be more specific? The Wolverine. Which X-Men film are you talking about? The Wolverine. The new one? Where he goes to Japan? That would be the Wolverine. Uh, oh, because you already asked me about X-Men Origins. That was the X-Men Origins Wolverine. <laughs> this one is The Wolverine, which is a distinct entity from X-Men Origins Wolverine. Thank you. You might be confused because Hugh Jackman is in both movies. I am, believe me. Uh, Wolverine is, is uh, living as a hermit and then a Japanese businessman who he saved during World War II in, from a nuclear bomb explosion says, I want to talk to the Wolverine. Uh, and, and a Japanese girl goes and gets him and brings him to Japan. He says, I'm dying. I need your Wolverine powers to live. And then the ultimate plot is that the Japanese man 
wanted to put himself inside a giant samurai suit and punch everything. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, the, what was the lady's name? Not the not the the lady with the big fingernails. No, she's like a like a lizard lady. The lizard, yes, the poison ivy. <laughs> no, whatever. I think her name was poison ivy. No, it wasn't poison. Poison ivy. oak. Uh, oh, venom. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, uh, he fights her, or the girl fights him, and then uh, Wolverine pushes the 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 robotic samurai off a cliff at the end. Hmm. Correct. Jay, Man of Steel. Uh, 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 Superman destroys the audience. Correct. Mike, Spider-Man 3. Uh, Tobey Maguire dances like an asshole. <laughs> Correct. Jay, Daredevil. Ben Affleck can't see anything, and then he embarrasses himself. Correct. Mike, The Avengers. Uh... Correct. Jay, <laughs> Iron Man 2. Oh. Uh, Mickey Rourke sits around with his parrot for the whole fucking movie, and then they fight once. Correct. <laughs> Mike, Ghost Rider. I didn't see the first one. Correct. Jay, The Incredible Hulk. Uh, Edward Norton is the Hulk, and he fights another Hulk. Correct. Mike, yeah. Catwoman. Oh, I didn't see Catwoman. Nobody saw Catwoman. Correct. <laughs> Jay, The Fantastic Four. They go into space, they become superheroes, and then they have to stop talking about